What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Easy Peasy Podcast, episode 52. Coming at you strongly, coming at you bigly. <laughs> Gonna keep saying that. Joining me this week, Dan. Wait, wait, what? Uh, Brandon. <laughs> no, uh, uh, wait, strike two. <laughs> okay, Nick. Hey, everybody, what's up? Nick's with me. Nick Gandy, as you know, has a second job, not able to be on every show, but we're here today. He's the only one that showed up. First snow must have scared away everyone else. We were going to have a full house. A fuller house. The fullest. The fullest house. It would have been, right? Or close yeah. to, yeah. Five people. But hey, it's all good. We're just going to chat about, vamp about, talk about gaming and stuff here for, for now. Uh, maybe Brandon will show up. But if not, we'll dive into Starboy. We got... Starboy has been out for full two weeks now, I believe. No, one week. Um, Really good. I dig it. There's a lot of tracks on there, just like his first album, or his other last album. Mm -hmm. Uh, What was it called? Beauty Between the Madness? Yeah, Beauty Between the Madness. Um, uh, There's a lot of tracks that just are standout tracks to me. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of interesting because they aren't the singles. This is the exact same kind of situation. That tends to happen a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, chatting about that, there's some interesting stuff happening in the world of gaming with that NES cl- NES Classic. Yeah. You guys, have you gotten into a restock here, there at Jay's? No. I don't expect it until after Christmas, honestly. Nuts. Maybe Today, in early 2017. This yeah. morning, uh, Toys R Us confirmed by a friend of the show, Alex Cruz, who's been on the podcast before. Oh. He's, Ooh, that's a good he's a stalker too. at Toys yeah. R Us. No, he's, he's stalking kids while they're shopping. <laughs> no, um, but he's a night night stalker right now. There, um, I don't think he cares. I'm telling you that, but he's definitely verified and uh, given us numbers. They had a, quite a bit come in last Wednesday, I think, and then they were going to release them either Friday or Sunday. He confirmed with me last night. They released them this morning. I guarantee those people waiting out in the snow. Probably. First snow here in Dude, Des Moines, Iowa. That's nuts. Waiting out in the snow. <laughs> that's rough. Are they still selling them retail, do we know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Toys R Us is kind of a shady company. Like, <clears throat> I'm not a huge fan of them just because they're, they're the little guy, right? Yeah. Like, who's left doing just toys? I know, right? Not, no no money. There's right? not a whole lot left. So, like, their Amiibos are always a dollar more. Just, it's just, like, small stuff like that. So, I, I wouldn't doubt. Little like, unnecessary things. Exactly. Like, new games are 65 instead of 60. Oh, I did not know that. Well, I don't think that's the case, but I just think I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah. So let's just dive right in though. Yeah. To gaming. Okay. To actual gaming. Yeah. Uh, what's going on? I got my Xbox one, baby. I get a, I don't know, pretty busy. So I don't get a game as much as I want to, but I've been getting into Fallout 4. I know a year late, but it's all good, dude. Everyone gets in that game the entire generation of the console. Because yeah. it's just that it's a huge, expansive game. You can spend three hundred hours and not see everything. Right. That's um, insane. So Fallout Four, but I want to ask you now that I just have you and I on the pod talking about some games. Uh, I've been ga- getting back into it again, uh, as you might be seeing on the YouTube channel, where you might be listening to this. We got Gears of War Ultimate Edition soon to have Dishonor. But real quick, why did you choose Xbox One over PlayStation Four? Because uh, you're in the minority, so am yeah. I. Yep. PlayStation 4 is kicking ass this year. I mm-hmm. think that they just hit 60 million units sold, which yeah. is nuts. It's yeah. almost as fast as the Wii. Um, but although numbers have been slowing down, the yeah. Xbox, barely at 30 or really? close to. So we're getting slaughtered, even though yeah. most would say we have the best games. Right. We have um, not the best UI. I don't really like the whole like weird app, like Windows yeah. 8 type yeah. thing. But uh, the best games besides... In the best exclusives, I mean, what did PlayStation have this year? The Order tags, huh? Yeah, I mean, Charted was great. Yeah, I've always actually been on PlayStation side of the fence. Like growing up, I had PS One, PS Two. Never got a PS Three, but I always was into it. I wanted the. So you were PlayStation One, PlayStation Two. Then the next generation, you were Three Hundred and Sixty, which I just found out today. Yeah, yeah. Back in like twenty eleven, I got a Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Which was still like way late for yeah. having a 360, but what games did that you play on that? Do you remember? Uh, Bioshock, Life for Dead. Oh yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, dude, I'm the exact same as you. 2008 to 2010, 11 games mm-hmm. like Bioshock one and two, yeah. 2007 to 2010, mm-hmm. um, and then Left for Dead one and two. Yeah. Oh, I love those games, and I would definitely love a Left for Dead three. Yeah, um, I really dig 
the whole backwards compatibility thing they've done with like a lot of the popular titles on Xbox 360. That and it's play. free. You don't yeah. have to like for PlayStation. You have to pay twenty dollars for a PlayStation One game. Like what? what? That's weird. Like you, if you have the 360 disc, yeah. you can pop it in. You can buy it down. You can download it off the marketplace. Yeah. I really think Xbox is turn is becoming a extremely consumer friendly. Oh, yeah. Consoles. So, yeah. you dive in Xbox One. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. No. Love talking about gaming. <laughs> yeah. Never get to. Yeah. Uh, I know, right? So, why though? Why why, why did you go that way? Um, Shane has always been an Xbox fan as well. She's the, kind of the reason we had the 360. Because um, I was always PlayStation side of the fence. When I when we met, she's like, I was like, oh, you have an Xbox? Like, I don't know if this is going to work out. <laughs> uh, but And then she like opened my eyes to the Xbox. I really enjoyed you know the Xbox. Um yeah, they just have so much to offer. Like the all the like game lineup is amazing, especially the last couple of years. Like they've had all those commercials, like our best game lineup yet, which is arguably true. Yeah, um, I love the backwards compatibility factor. I like the controller more. The controller I just, is I like. I hated it at first when I first saw it with like the original Xbox coming out because I was so used to the PS2 controller, but I've gotten used to the 360 controller now, and I like it a lot. Yeah, um, and the Xbox One, mm-hmm. which is just even better. Right. Uh, I don't have live yet, Xbox Live, but uh, Xbox Live is very uh, economically friendly because you get the, what the free games. Eleven hundred dollars worth of free gaming, free games this year. That's for amazing. fifty to sixty dollars, depending on how you. Uh, I actually yeah. get mine for thirty five every Black Friday. I get one or two years to stock up. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I got last year. I got or two years ago. I got three years for a hundred bucks, and then now I don't have to pay till twenty eighteen and nineteen. That's so awesome. yeah. Um, Doing it right. Yeah, I mean, so I definitely recommend if you ever need help, let me look into it because I can. I always keep my eye out for those. I think I actually have an unused code for a full year in my in my filing yeah. cabinet. But <laughs> That's awesome. um, yeah, I really want you to get Xbox Live because yeah, that just unlocks so much. Like right. not only the free games you were saying, your you're Shayna, your fiance, yeah. played Murdered Suspect. What's it called? Uh, Murdered Soul Suspect. Soul Suspect. Not like the most well-known game ever, right. but yeah. like it was free for December, or I think it was November 15th to November 30th. It was free. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, def- uh, definitely recommend that. You, But is your Xbox connected to the internet still? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So are you able to like look at the marketplace or look at any deals? And- yep. Cool. And we downloaded a few games just from that. Cool. Uh, just, yeah, not connected to live yet. Yeah, 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 you can still obviously purchase games. Right. So you're playing Fallout Fallout Four. Mm-hmm. I haven't actually dipped back into Fallout Four in, I mean, almost a full year now. Right. Yeah. Um, probably maybe before you were going hard on it when it first came oh, out. Oh man, I've only but we just checked my save though, and I'm only level thirty five. Um, I did for, just remember though when I hooked this whole studio back up that I did get all the the season pass when I bought the game. Oh, okay. Do you know what that means? Like, is it where you get all, like, the... Download- all the downloadable content, content yeah. all the extra DLC. So, I actually, when I hooked this up and we moved to the, into this house, I downloaded um, all five of the DLC things. So, I mean, I have a lot to go through. Yeah. I didn't beat the game either. So, right. I think it'd be kind of fun to almost play again, just, like... Yeah. Just so you and I can just vamp about it. I'm down. We might even be able to do like a Fallout pod, just like a couple episodes, you know? I would do that. Short, um, like catch up with each other once every 25 hours or whatever. Yeah. Of like actual game. Yeah. Um, That's why I sent you that Snapchat the other day with the bottle of liquor. Oh. (laughs) Temporarily. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude! I love that. That was hilarious, dude. Like eight people like took a screenshot of it. They probably didn't even know what I was talking about, but like, oh, that's hilarious. Oh, exactly, right? Like yeah. people just don't even understand. It's from the Fallout world. It's yeah. from Bethesda. So real quick, I want to hear about. You said you're level fifteen. Yeah. Um. You. I want to hear about how you play the game. Um. I honestly had no idea what to expect, so I looked up like a lot of tutorials and stuff like that, like what, how should I start my stats, like where should I go my perks, and I just found like a really good like general one where I had like a lot of stamina, some strength, etc. Do um, you like to use like guns, or do you like to go melee, or do you like to use explosives? I've kind of always preferred melee i don't know really why. i've always liked melee it's interesting because i'm the exact opposite i know but <laughs> in this game like there's not really many good melee weapons uh and the ones that you can find are really expensive and like there's no way to like easy way to get those i guess yeah so i've kind of had to resort to guns um and i need to like upgrade my gunslinger perk and stuff so i can like get better weapons 
But right now, I just kind of have some shitty weapons, and I've been like holding my own. I've probably died a hundred times, but yeah. dude, it's <laughs> totally fine. Just long, you gotta save, 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 I, save. Oh yeah, I every save ten minutes. Time. Just I know, right? I save all the time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, that's totally fine. I don't. I don't like to melee. I like to use. In the beginning, I like to just do handguns and pistols because yep. they're so accessible. Like you can find them every, anywhere. Yep. And then I like to move to snipers and right assault rifles. <clears throat> Yeah, but like you're saying, like it's hard to find like the best of the best. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, you have to dig, dig, dig. Yeah, it is kind of nice playing it so late because a lot of people have gone through the game like extensively. So uh, if I needed like, so I've looked up a couple of things like where's the best armor I can find right now, and I looked up the whole totally. like, ballistic weave thing. I don't know if you. have Heard about that? Weave. I think I like I said I would d- dip back into it. But yeah. I want to now that you. I have a friend playing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I love I love the game and just chat about gaming. So mm-hmm. like that's yeah. Let's let's get into it. But yeah. what, what what is that? So ballistic weave is like a it's a perk. You have to have you have to go through the railroad quests. Oh yeah. Which I haven't even hit the railroad yet. I don't even know anything about that. Oh yet. really? Okay. Uh, I've done a bunch of Miniman stuff and I did a little bit of the what are the like army dudes like yeah i know what you're uh, talking about and the minuteman stuff is so annoying to me because he's yeah. just always asking me to do things go I to this settlement go to that settlement right. um and then i am like pretty close because i've gotten back into like the main storyline again so i've gotten pretty close to i think seeing the institute finally like oh again, nice I'm getting close to that okay. but yeah i haven't done any railroad stuff which i might go and do real quick so i can do this whole ballistic weave thing but basically, you can take any piece of uh, clothing. You can take like a suit or a hat, um, and you can uh, make so ballistic weave is like military grade uh, armor type of stuff. And you can make a suit have like a three hundred damage like. Oh uh, like, wow! So like you can have like just a regular clothing, but have like a super high resistance to like uh, energy and uh, damage and stuff. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I love Fallout. Like, there's so many weird things like that. Yeah, that I would never know. I would not probably have found out if I didn't yeah. read a couple articles. Like, for sure. So, are you, have you spent any time in the settlement building the settlement itself and like any yeah. of that stuff? I, I think it's interesting. I have a few of them. Um, like, we have like the main homeland or whatever. Yeah. And I have like a handful of other ones I haven't really built on so much. I just got the castle where you have to, I don't know if you've gotten that far with the Miniman stuff. Where you have to like beat that queen, the Milo queen. Or oh whatever. yeah, that's hard as fuck. I hate it. Yeah, that. I hate <laughs> it's it. Annoying. I just instantly just start throwing a bunch of grenades yep. until yep. like it pops, like the heart, pop, like blows her up, like internally. Yep. I love when they, they die though. Like they just wherever their like weak spots are, just burst out yep. like goo. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the game's great. I spent two hundred fifty to three hundred hours on Fallout Three. About yeah. 100, 150 on Fallout New Vegas. Didn't actually beat that game, but I love Fallout. Definitely want to dip back into it, mm-hmm. but this what other games are you playing? Anything else? Uh, Anything that you'd like to play if, you, if, if money and time wasn't an option right now? Yeah, I'm excited for the new uh, Resident Evil game to come out. Awesome. It comes out later this month or ne- early next year. Next, early next year, yeah, Q1. So I think they. what's interesting that you bring that up is yesterday for other gaming nerds out there, a PlayStation Experience uh, conference where just PlayStation, the announces a bunch of cool stuff yeah. and they actually did like yeah. tons of cool stuff nice um but th- at the conference they had a playable demo of re7 oh really yeah so that's awesome <clears throat> it's gonna it's not gonna get delayed everyone's pretty confident it's actually gonna come out next year with the yeah. release date which i think is february january i think it is yeah, yeah. Like so you're excited for that yep uh, i've always been a resident evil fan i like the old games resident evil 4 <laughs> is in my realm arguably one of the best games out there. And you won't have many people arguing against yeah. that. Um, so I actually did re-download it. I downloaded it on Xbox. Yeah, That's okay. one of the games I purchased and I'm replaying that right now. The $20 price tag is kind of annoying to me. I wish yeah. it was 10 I, I would have, I would 10 would be fair. Like, yeah. I just had such a connection to it. I was like, that's fine. I'll pay 20 I don't care. Uh, but it's funny that, because on Resident Evil 4, I, I remember back in the day when I was playing it on PS2, I got stuck in this one part and I just quit. I never played it again. It's been 10 years. <laughs> uh, and I'm at that same exact point now. And I just stopped. I was like, no I, way. I, can't. I don't know. Like, I'm going to try to get back into it and play. But it's well, just Well, you have, like, so access to so many guides. Like, I know. But the, the guides don't help you, man. It's what just, do you say? What for, do you this, mean? for this area that you're at, you're, like, in this castle. and But there's just, like, 80 fucking, like, dudes that you have to kill. And you're trying to save Ashley, which... 
I mean, the game's 10 years old. Spoiler alert. Yeah, uh, it's like the president's daughter you're trying to save. Um, so you're trying to keep her alive while there's, like, dudes swarming you. So it's, like, nearly impossible. There's not, like, a strategy to it. You just have to kill everybody. And, like, the point I got in my game, I kind of screwed myself over because I'm really low on ammo and there's not a lot of ammo around. So I'm just like, fuck. Dang. Yeah. yeah it's how, how, how long into it are you? Like, three hours? Four? Uh, yeah, probably, like, three or four. So you Which, could theoretically start over... But also, yeah. like, go and get all the ammo that you can, I just preparing for that moment. Right. I wonder, I, I don't, like I said, I haven't played that game, but I would be interested it's in fun, to dude. go through and just to get to that point, just so I can say I quit, because yeah. I can't get past <laughs> it. Like, no, you might be able to do better than I was. I thought I was doing good at, like, collecting all the things, because, like, I remember back in the day playing it with the shitty graphics that it was. I miss so much, like, because you just can't really tell in the game. Yeah, and yeah. Now that it's in, like, HD, I can see a lot So is that, is that a thing? Like, it is upgraded, like, yeah. visuals? Yeah, like, it is graphics. HD now. Yeah. Okay. It was just really Dope. cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Would love to dive into that. Um, you can see the stack of games here. I know, right? Your queue um, of games. Oh. Well, <laughs> you might have heard that. You can my, hear the games. You can, but you can see, like, the cellophane. It's just yeah, yeah, cellophane yeah. on everything. Like, yeah. I don't play games. Like, I just collect You're like them. a girl buying a new pair of clothing and then not <laughs> wearing it for like three months this well, still has the tag on it <laughs> yeah yeah for real but i mean at the end of the day where it's the winter months yeah like we said first first snow uh, in des moines iowa so we got yeah, nothing else to do because it's december 4th that's crazy our boy the weekend we yeah. got to see him in 2015 yep. dropping star boy after some really cool music videos yeah what do you think about the album overall then? <clears throat> I have listened to it a, a few times this past week and I do really enjoy it. There's a few tracks in particular that I like more than others. I thought Starboy, the, the track, like the first leading sing, single uh -huh. um, featuring Daft Punk was going to be a heavier hitter yeah. just because I Can't Feel My Face was so huge. It right? really was. Uh, but it's still a really good track. The Daft Punk in influence is okay in that. Um, Party Monster is really good. Like, I think the first half is really solid. Yeah. I really like Reminder. That's probably one of my favorites on there. Secrets is probably my favorite track. Um, what about Sidewalks with Kendrick? It's good. I hadn't heard a lot from Kendrick yet lately, so. Yeah. It's, I was, it's been like six months since we had anything from him. Really. I was happy to hear him featured on there. He's just a master. Yeah. Master Anything rapper. he touches. Yeah. yeah, overall the album is really solid. Um, that false alarm music video. Yeah, and I, I just love the pace of that track because there's not too much else on the right. on the album that has that speedy like bump 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 bumps. Right. Yeah. Like pace. Uh, so overall it's really good. There's a lot of tracks on here that are like holy shit. He sounds yeah. like Michael Jackson. Oh, like, yeah. straight up. He reminds me of Michael, and I'm just thinking to myself like. When Michael was huge, like mm -hmm. his first few albums, I know right. this is the weekend's like what fifth album? Uh, third, fourth. He had trilogy. Oh, fourth. Okay, yeah. Kissland trilogy, Beauty Behind. Okay, and then fourth yeah. album. So fourth, four albums into Michael Jackson's career, he was the biggest thing ever. I think, yeah, right. Or solo yeah. career. Mm -hmm. And just thinking about where your parents were, like they're in their twenties and thirties. Right. Like it's just interesting because we're like that right now yeah. for the weekend. I know it's like easy to like because he has the same kind of like high pitch higher right. voice like he can hit <clears> those really high notes that it's easy to compare him to Michael but he really does sound like him in, on these. So it's funny that you say that because he I don't know Michael had a lot more I don't know what to call it almost family friendly vibe to him like these lyrics and stuff. Totally. Um, Good point. The weekend it, you will talk about doing drugs on every track he'll talk about bitches on every track <laughs> and then on that reminder track which i love so much it, he mentions that he got a teen choice award he's like fuck you i'm not a teen choice award winner like i don't oh. want to be like if you listen to the lyrics on that like it's just too funny it's cool Cause because like, he's like i know i'm not he's supposed to be a robot i shouldn't for be teens. this but i am somehow because i'm the like, biggest thing in music yeah right? but i think his voice actually helps with that a lot if he had like a rougher sounding voice with this same music I don't think he would have that like same appeal to people, but totally. his voice does sound like Michael Jackson. People like that. So that Stargirl interlude with Lana, that yeah. is beautiful. And I, I wish it was an actual track, not yeah. an interlude. I was surprised. And that's weird that such a huge artist is just on an interlude for his right. own. Right. Like, like, no big deal. And I love how it's called Stargirl, because they, they yeah. have so many, like, uh, um, you can compare them really well, like yeah. male and female, like mm -hmm. great humongous vocalists that hit it huge with their first couple albums. Right. 
you know, I I mean, Old Beauty Behind's the third album, but yep. it just feels like his first breakout. I know. Well, it basically was. I think I saw it. Because no one really It knew sold him. 60 million. Yeah. No one really knew about him before. I don't know if that's a full album or if that's just, I can't uh, can't feel my face. Like, the single itself sold 60 million. But yeah. either way. Yeah, that's like huge. 60 million people paid. Yeah. Let alone 150 movie. probably have it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so the al- tra- album overall, I mean, it's one of those, I'm going to have to let it sit in with me a little bit more. Uh, Beauty let Behind. Just because the time that Beauty Behind came yeah. out, like I think it was it beginning was, of the year, spring, yeah. right? Like yeah. it was, I was jump, I would leap right into it. Yeah. And uh, this is just setting with me a little bit differently with the, yeah. it being winter, the snow, like we just said. We've said three times now. Yep. Snow, snow just came down. I've been listening to Christmas music, um, a lot like slower tempoed stuff. Right. But yeah. I'm the same way. I do like how he started and ended with that funk featuring. That's kind of cool. Totally. That's a good call out. I didn't even realize that. That is kind of cool. So that last track, I feel it coming. Um, not the biggest fan of it. I'm just really yeah. surprised overall. And then all I know with Future, I just don't really care for Future. I mean, I, I know <laughs> I'm in that minority. He yeah. was actually amazing performer live. Yeah. Um, and his stuff overall, he's a great rapper. Now he has yeah. that unique like twang to his voice. That's but, yeah. That really helps set you apart. You have to have something special about your voice. Totally. Like you can't just sing about the same stuff and. You gotta ask something that sets you apart. Agreed. Which I think so, he definitely has that now. Yeah. Um, on your November playlist, though, what do you got going on there? I want to call out one thing. In November, I just listened to so much of AFI Sing the Sorrow. Oh, like, that's really have... that's one of the few like main things I listened to. Um, uh, and it it was and it was uh, just timely because they were just announced a new album, the Blood album, coming out. Yeah, I think it's their tenth album coming out next month, okay. January. 20th or 13th I believe okay so yeah the Blood Album they have a, a few uh, singles have you gotten to listen to them at all um I haven't yet actually Snow Cats White Offerings really good okay like it's really good rock yeah like it's they're they're dipping a little bit away from that Sing the Sorrow emo yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or not even hardcore yeah. excuse me emo rock yeah, yeah. Um, and now they're just like really feeling like they're a rock band just a good right? rock band yeah like kind of like bring that's the how horizon. I felt with their last album with AFI's totally past album. And I li- I've been listening to Burials, and it's a great album, but I just can't get into it. That's kind of another thing where it's like a handful of songs I really like, but just like a, a thing as a whole, I don't. I, I can't mean, get into it. I yeah. mean, I, I've literally started it like and gotten to like the third or fourth song before I've had to change it. I don't know <laughs> if I have to just put it on shuffle maybe. or That could be a good idea. It just might. put it on the background while you're doing something so you're not really like thinking about True. it. True. Yeah. It might be the sequencing. Like, I don't it know if be. I'm not. It's just not really working for me right. um, Code Orange released that track Forever I think it's yeah. the title track on their new album coming out also next month uh, in January January 13th love Code Orange yeah saw them with Every Time I Die and uh, it was one of my favorite shows ever I think it was Every Time I Die Code Orange and Let Live like be nuts so good dude um, the uh, the out, albums is like, just like this really like you see the album cover, like, come on, guys. They're trying oh. to do this black and white. Like, yeah. They're so, like... They're trying to be so hard. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, yeah. they tr- they're they trying really hard. Yeah. If you follow their Which, Instagram and Twitter, they're just, they're like... They're not hard. <laughs> no, they're hard. That's all Their music are. is, but that's it. <laughs> they aren't. So, uh, also... It's too funny. In February, we got Hippocampus' new album. Woo! Nice dude. I love the uh, the single boyish, the first single, and then they just had their the second single come out. Yeah. Really good, dude. It's I'm just glad that has happened. Dude, us. I'm glad we just went and saw them. And oh god, dude. yeah. Somerset, we just went and saw them. Yeah. Screw it, just you and I. Everyone else wants to hang out at camp, and right. then we just went and saw them again at, or I went and saw them at Woolies. But you and I also yeah, we went also to saw them again at Bobville. Yep. Yeah, so I've seen them a few times now. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um. I think just Iowan resident, not from Iowa. Her name's Squirrel Flower, though. Okay. Really, really awesome. Uh, she sounds like uh, just, what's her name? Nora Jones, kind of, like oh. that female singer-songwriter. That's awesome. She uh, opened up for Xenia Rubinos, who I just saw in May uh, when I was working at, or April, I believe, when I was working at the Des Moines Social Club with Brandon. Okay. Um, she opened up just as like a local act and yeah. she goes to Drake or Iowa State, nice. but she, uh, just released a new single called not your prey. I'll have to link you to it. Cause I yeah, think that you'd definitely. actually really enjoy it, especially this time of year. Is that right. like, 
has a good feel. Um, Nora Jones is not the best comparison, by the way. I just that's what came to mind. It's yeah. more of a what's her name starts with an R. Um, she seems Sam, sings the song Samson. Okay, I can no, I'm not sure. Uh, Regina Spector. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really good comparison there because she's got like that fluttery voice, but also like that kind of raspy. Like, yeah, <laughs> just, just sounds really, really great, and I think that you'd really like her. That's cool. Um, and so and she's getting like crazy amount of press, which is cool. I don't know like, cool. how she has her connects being like right a local Des Moines um, artist, but interesting. Let me see if I got, I've got one more thing I think I want to bring up here for a recent listening. And, uh, oh, Childish Gambino, Homegirl Drop, oh, and I that, that. So, call out to Apple Music, another negative thing about <laughs> them is, dude, I've tried to download this album so many times. I know yeah. I don't have to have it downloaded to listen to yeah. it, but at work I do. Like, yeah. and that's yeah. why I do a lot of my music listening now because yeah. we're so busy. Yeah. Um, playing games, I don't really like to listen to music, especially sure. when I have commentary exactly. going on. So... Uh, what do you think about it? I haven't actually gotten to listen to the whole thing yet. It's interesting. Okay. So I remember, out, shout out to a friend of the show, Alex Bush. He had reminded me that he was like switching up his style, that he was just basically like, I'm not rapping anymore. Um, I forgot all about that when I jumped into this album. I was expecting the same old like hip hop rap, like spitting and shit. Um, <laughs> and it was, it's nothing like that. So if you're, Expecting that, don't, I guess, for <laughs> like, I yeah. don't know what else to say. Uh, he, it is uh, considered an R&B slash soul album, is what Apple Music has categorized it. It's, uh, there's a lot of funk elements in there as well, I'd like to say. Yes. It's slower, uh, slower paced. A few songs I do really like. I like the song Terrified on there. Terrified, okay. Um, Redbone is the single. That song is pretty good. That's a good, like... If you just want to like see what the album is going to sound like, just listen to Redbone. Okay. That'll give you a kind of a yeah, feel nice. for what it is. But overall, it's strange. It's, it just definitely reminds me of like a 70s funk album. Yeah. It's soul and funk album. It's, it's weird. He has some songs on there. I feel like this... So every artist goes through it where they like they have their couple of albums, they get their fame or whatever... And then they're like, uh, for like pop punk bands, it'd be like their homesick album or like, I don't like the scene anymore album, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, this is like his, I feel like, because listening to some of the lyrics, this is kind of like his, like the music industry is kind of fucked up. Like he mentions it in there a few times about the music industry and how they're fucking them over type of thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I need to do some research on kind of what these lyrics mean to him, but something's going on. I hope he gives a few interviews to kind of... Yeah, explain what he's what he's was going through writing this album and what mm-hmm. he's yeah like where yeah. his views are and what he's going what he's doing. Yeah, because I know there's a lot to it. Like there's just the uh, album cover alone is insane. I, yeah, I, I really like it. Yeah, I love the the colors. It's really cool. It's blue, yeah. it's like black, neon blue with like yeah. this, what almost like an African looking woman with like this thing around her face, like a headdress yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. Really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, me and your mama, the first single, I really did dug it, but I thought it was like six minutes, six twenty. Yeah, like yeah. this is too long, man. Yeah. Um, he's like doing some really experimental stuff, which is like, it's cool. Like I'm glad he's like trying new stuff, but everyone's like saying it's hit or miss. You either love it or like it. it. Yeah. Yep. That's what you were saying earlier this week. So, um, as you can see, I've downloaded quite a bit of music, just haven't really gotten a chance to listen to it. Yeah. Um, Alistair Hennessy, who I've been really digging. That's what you were telling me. They about. released their new album last week on Black Friday, same day as the Starboy from the weekend. Okay. Um, they are, really, they sound a lot like a lot of spew. Okay. Um, not technically or lyrically there at all by okay. any means, especially re- lyrically. A lot of spew's like masterclass. Oh yeah, you can't. <laughs> like that's. But the music, the music sounds super pretty and it's just it's just like that post hardcore okay and i love it because like, i do yeah that's dude we're, tw- we're getting into our mid and late 20s yep. we're not listening to hardcore uh music anymore yep. or post hardcore yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever you want to call it right yep like uh so that their their album came out i've listened to it once or twice it's pretty solid overall it's called the house we grew up in okay alistair hennessy no sleep records Oh, dude, that's the thing. It's like, I think No Sleep, I haven't had too many huge releases. Yeah. If you're paying attention to their, I'm not trying to throw any shade, but if you're paying attention to their 
uh, Black Friday sales and everything. They're trying to really hit on that three to five year ago nostalgia on balance composure. They are, yeah. They're doing the cassette tapes and so forth. So they just That's haven't had any, together probably. <laughs> yeah, they haven't had any heavy hitters. Yep. I mean, for a while. I haven't listened to the so, Protest the Heroes new album, Pacific Myth, at all. I haven't yet. I do really enjoy Protest the Heroes. I love their first couple albums. Oh, but yeah. It's just like, then they just got into a weird territory <laughs> with like singing about fantasy yeah. stuff like so much. And just like the myth, the yeah. mythical yep. gods and everything. Mm. So that leads me into Flume. Yeah. You really love this companion EP. I do. I, I don't know what it is but it's only four tracks but this companion album or this companion ep i guess for me is just really hitting it i've i've just been trapped because it's almost perfect time wise for my travel like to and from work or like oh to listen to the whole thing so i can just listen to the whole thing totally uh i just love it man i don't know what it is because i feel like the, the the album skin album for me didn't do it as much as like you know, this previous. I album. agree. I agree. So um, this self-title is one of the best albums, like of the yeah. last few years. And I think I was just too biased when I was trying to listen to this new album to agree. really agree it for it. But this skin EP for me, man, is really doing it. I really like it a lot. What I will say is I listened to the skin EP and it was solid. I really like it. Um, and then also though, that got me to listen to skin itself yeah. again. Yeah. That's so like I this week to, I've yeah. been listening to both. Yeah. Like, yep. And there's a lot of tracks on that skin album that are just like, boom, they just right. knock you on your feet. I really love Wall Fuck. That's probably <laughs> yeah. one of my, I mean, it's probably my favorite app track, even though it's probably not the best track. It's probably my favorite track. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So, overall, just kind of listen to some older stuff. I mean, we're yeah. not dipping into any too much new, new, new. That's what I was going to say. I, just this past month, in November, I guess, specifically, I was listening to a lot of uh, brand new because totally. I just feel like that hits me home, like, this time of year. Yep. A lot of Fall Out Boy, because uh, that's just always, always been my jam. Uh, I was listening to a lot of Anti-Flag. Cause yeah, like a, totally. Because yeah. they're, like, anti-government, and I was just like, fuck yeah. Trump. Yeah. Like, fuck Shout Trump. out. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jason Tate, who, uh, editor-in-chief and creator of AbsolutePunk.net. Okay. But now he runs his uh, a new website called Chorus.fm. Um, awesome podcast, too. Listen to it. Um, I haven't gotten to listen to it in quite some time because I haven't been able to listen to any podcast. Right. Uh, but Encore with Thomas Nassif. Anyway, shout out to them because he was just posted this awesome tweet or uh, Instagram about his like top 30 albums most listened to in the last month. And oh, like, really? 10 of them are anti flag. Really? <laughs> any anti flag albums? Yeah. Because that's, funny. that's yeah. the same way. And that's me. Radiohead, Hail to the Thief. Yep, yep. I've been listening to that a lot because, uh, just because of Trump. And, yeah, yeah. and then that got me to listen to Kid A. And then um, there you go. I just found like work has been really intense. So I haven't been able to listen to anything with lyrics. So I've been listening to uh, a lot of Explosions in the Sky. There you go. Absolutely love Beautiful. Explosions in the Sky. Dude. Yeah. So Long Lonesome is one of my favorite. Or All of a Sudden I Miss Everything. Excuse me. Okay. All of a Sudden I Miss any- Everything. So Long Lonesome's the sixth and last track. I don't know if you've ever listened to it, but it came out in 2007. Um, that one specifically, I'm not sure if I've listened to. It's just perfect. It's a 45 minutes long. Can listen to it three, four times at work. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, one last thing I wanted to hit on music-wise. Totally. Uh, that you, We were talking about how we don't really listen to a lot of hardcore anymore, which is true. But no, a band that I've always enjoyed, I think we talked about them before, and like every time they have a new record, I still listen to it. I still enjoy it. Uh, Norma Jean put out a new oh, album. Oh, totally. Uh, this new album, Polar Similar, dude, is just like rocking it for me. I'm pretty really, sure they just played at Woolies, too. I really love it, man. Really? Uh, I don't know what it is. And like their past few albums, I just... Like, Any just standout really tracks that I need to just like maybe um, dip my toes in? Dude, really all of it's good, but try um, Synthetic Sun. It's one of the singles. That's a really good one. Um, so, actually, all of the singles on that, if you look it up, are really good. Oh, I'm looking it up right here. Pol- oh, yeah, I've Polar seen this. Like, the album cover is kind of interesting. It, it, explain it. it like it. So it's a uh, some dead mice, but they're like ranging in colors: a gray, a maroon, a black, and then like a lighter black. Uh, but that is actually. I was just scrolling through new albums on Apple Music, and I saw it. I was like, oh, that's a weird album cover. And then like, see, it's kind of hard to read the uh, 
name of the artist. But then I like looked at it like, oh, it's Norma Jean. That's, That's cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, I just started. I just dove right into it as soon as I saw it. And I was like, oh man, I really enjoy it. I'm gonna download Synthetic Sun. If I like it, I'm gonna rock out to the rest of the album because I think you'll enjoy it, dude. I've Which, been listening just nonstop, literally, uh, to every time I die when I'm running. Well, that's what I'm saying. So like I'm. It, I actually creeped into my older cardio playlist, and I was, <laughs> I was listening to it. Oh, yeah. What did yeah. you think about it? I liked it a lot. Yeah. Well, because there's a lot of bands that you had listened to back in the day that I had knew of. I was aware of them, but I never actually listened to them. And those are cardio, hardest, like, they had the hardest hitters. So I heard those like, snacks. Or those snacks. I heard those <laughs> snacks. I'm a little hungry. I heard, yeah. those, I heard those tracks, and I was like, oh, sh- like, these are really good. Like, I'm yeah. bummed that I never got into these so guys. It, it, I know I'm, like, I'm putting you on the spot, but real quick, oh. is there any track on there that you're just like, or like artist even, um, from so your cardio playlist? For that cardio one, that's literally that playlist I made in 2008. That playlist is old as heck. Let me see it again. Um, yeah, let me bust it up here real quick for the listeners. We're vamping. But it has the bled on there. It has yeah, the yeah, car yeah. morale. So, um, the Set way. Your Goals, Guy of Bleeds. Like, there's oh, yeah, like, no. Guy of Bleeds is great. Uh, which one? Um, the Hugh Mannequin, the Color, color Morale. I oh, really yeah. enjoyed that because, like, I had never listened to the Color Morale, really, and that one really hit it for me. And then of Mice and, of Mice and Men, um, I never album, really got into them either. No. But, uh, is it the same lyricist as another band? Yeah, I forget um, his name. I used to know the entire, like, situation because there's so much drama. I know it. it. Uh, um, he used to be the, he was the first lyricist, or uh, the vocalist of Attack Attack. Attack Attack, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Attack and, Attack was my jam back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, it's, it's like crap to admit it, but like, I also loved Ism hey. Foff. I set my friends on fire, and oh, yeah. on I here, in Ravenous, Ravenous Rhinos is literally like my yep. second or third most played song ever. No, I was on my say, iTunes. <laughs> that's funny, because that is, yeah, definitely one of my favorite albums. I had the CD in my car, but I it all the time. I'm not going to lie, though, like, busting out these older, like, they, not only are they heavy hitting, like, Hardcore and like metal songs, but they're uh, all nostalgia, man. Yeah, they they get that the nostalgia factor is like they gives you that extra push. When I'm on the treadmill, I was I literally ran a mile and a half in (laughs) nine minutes and two seconds, which I haven't done in quite some time. So yeah, really fun to get go back and like, dude, the Bled is one of those bands that you just wish they could have held on much longer because and everyone like now. Like in the last five years, they've been they broke up like late two thousand tens or two thousand odds or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, two thousand. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they broke up too soon. Is all I'm trying sure, to say. Yeah. Kind of like the chariot. Kind of like like everyone loves and like critically acclaimed respects those bands. But yeah. we're gonna cap off the show. We've been chatting, doing the duo cast, Sean yeah. and Nick. What's up? Talking about gaming. Talking about old music. Talking about new new music. Coming out next month. Yep. We got all those awesome releases in January and February we're looking forward it's to. Exciting. We wanted to touch base with you, listener at home, Lemonheads, about Christmas and kind of like the traditions. But we might save that for one of our last episodes. This might be our second to last episode of the year. As we wind down, we've got uh, Christmas and New yep. Year's coming up, obviously. We're going to be so. Puerto Rico, so that's New Year. Have we even mentioned that on the show at all? Man, I don't even know. We, don't we know. should dip our feet we in will. that. That'll be good. So, we will come back. Come at you hard, heavy, big lease, uh, hard lease, girthy, girth lease. Have that, have that uh, Lee on everything. Lee. Like, that's how our idiot president speaks. So, <laughs> yeah, we're going to come at you, talk about Puerto Rico, Christmas, all that fun stuff. Hopefully, nothing crazy happens in the news. That's bad. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to the Childish Gambino and I'll get my Apple Music fixed where it's, that. it's just not downloading on my phone. Yeah. But usually it will download on my computer and then it's just on my phone, which is oh. weird. But look at this. Like, it's grayed out. Yeah. It's like not available. Hmm. So, that being said, you can find me at Sean S. Johnson, Instagram, Twitter. You find us, find the podcast at the Easy Peasy Instagram and Twitter and the Easy Peasy on Facebook, just T H E space Easy Peasy. Check out our YouTube channel. Got some Let's Plays on there of Gears of War. We'll have Dishonored. We'll have some more. Maybe we'll get you in there yeah. in the studio and playing some games here soon. Dude. Yeah. Because all you have to do is bring over your controller and we can play some uh, split screen. No, no, what we could do. Okay. We could. <laughs> We're doing things. Do some. Yeah, we're doing things. <laughs> if, well, what you need to do is you need to get Xbox Live and yeah. Gears of War and we can okay. play the 
We I could record here. You could be at your house. Okay. You could play. We could play the story. Just it'd be a good time. I'm talking like together. Yeah. Because you would kill me if I. No, no, no. The story. Co op. Okay. Go through the whole thing. Yeah, dude. I still. Down. I need to go through it again on the new on the Gears World Ultimate Edition. So, yeah. that being said, where can they find you, Nick? Uh, Instagram is bazooka underscore Nick, and Facebook at Nick Gandy Art. Yeah, so what do you got going on for your art? You got to give us an update. I haven't been doing a lot yet. I mean... No, you don't even have time to game, I know. So yeah, like, or, it sucks, man. Any art. I've been doing, the, yeah, just doing the second job thing, working about 60 hours a week, so it does put a damper on my loves of gaming and art. All your that, hobbies, so. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm trying, though. I got I got a bunch of commissions I need to catch up on. Oh, really? <laughs> That's bad. Uh, people, are, yeah. people like asking me for stuff like the past month or two that I haven't been able to get to. But you had to get to it before Christmas. Yeah, so I'm probably going to be doing that a lot. So. Dang. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, this has been episode 52, Duo Cast. Sean and Nick coming at you bigly, hardly. <laughs> Strongly. Strongly. <laughs> Fasterly. <laughs> and peace. We out. <laughs>